The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on the Believer's Walk of Faith. The name of Jesus, it's above sickness. It's above manic depression. It's above eye disease. It's above all your family problems. It's above lack in finances. It's above job lack. It's above anything that you can name. It's above that. That means it has the authority over that situation. Hello, Bill Winston here, and welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Well, here's a simple but powerful truth. You don't have to earn or work for God's healing. You just receive it. You know, there was a, um, a man who had leprosy in Mark chapter 1, and here's what he said to Jesus. If thou will, thou can make me clean. Here's what Jesus said, I will. And he touched him and the leprosy departed. Wow, isn't that something? So this man didn't have to earn it and he wanted to know, is it the will of God that he be healed? Yes, it is. He touched him and the leprosy was immediately gone. I'm saying Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's go into today's message. It's called Faith for Healing. Jesus is alive today. He's alive yesterday, and He is alive forevermore, and He is in you right now. Now, what is He doing? The same thing He did yesterday. He's healing the sick, delivering the... Who is He doing it through? He's doing it through you. What do you have to do to make sure that He moves on your account? call his name. All you have to do is understand that everything that you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus. Let's show you that scripture. Let's go to Hebrew, uh, Colossians chapter three, if you will, and look at verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of of Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father, what? By Him. So notice what you have to do if you're going to pray. Look how it says pray. And this is John, and John chapter 14, and look at verse 13. And he says this, and whatsoever you shall ask, come on, in my name, keep going, I will do it. Verse 14. If you shall ask anything, come on, in my name, I will do it. Now that word ask comes from a Greek word, aito. And it doesn't mean ask like you're pleading for some promise or something. It doesn't mean that. It means whatever you demand. Whatever you demand. Let me show you the request kind of ask that you want. Look at uh, uh, John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father, what? In my name. Keep going. He's going to give it to you. He's going to give it to you. Now, this is interesting here because all of a sudden, this name is the thing that's on the line. This whole idea about this name so in Acts, Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, and Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. That's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Alms are like a beggar asking for some money or whatever have you who's seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, 
I give, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you rise up, come on, and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Watch this. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered into, with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, you men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate and when Pilate was to let him go. But you denied the Holy One of, and the just and desired a murderer to be granted you. Now watch this, follow this. And you killed the Prince of Life whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man whole, this man strong. Now I want you to see that. His name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. His name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Now this, this, is, this is very, very key because now in chapter four and verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, so this will work for you even if you're ignorant. <laughs> they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Watch this. And beholding the man which was healed, standing it with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. Now this is what they came up with. Saying, what shall we do with, with these men? For this indeed is a notable miracle, which has been done by them is manifest to us, to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. That's why the devil doesn't want miracles. But that it spread no further among the people, watch this, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no, to no man, what? In the name. Keep going. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. Notice what it didn't say. Let, let's stop the miracles. Let's tell them don't work any more miracles. They didn't tell them that. They said, no, no, let's stop the name. Let's, let's see, if you don't stop the name, you won't stop the miracles. And to preach and teach in the name. What happens when you teach something? Understanding comes, faith comes. So I can teach you the name and when I teach you the name, faith will come in the name. And what will the name do? Whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. So in the book of Acts, they didn't have anything but that name. What did they do in that name? They got baptized in the Holy Ghost in that name, spoken tongue in that name. The Bible said they gathered together in that name. The Bible said he sent them out to heal the sick and they healed them in his name. Everything that he did to cast out devils in his name. So notice what happened. The name, the name, the name. What has happened to the modern church? Some people are afraid to use the name. You get up in front of the prayer group or get up in front of a public audience and all of a sudden they don't want you to use the name. I'm saying people be on the bus and they'll talk about God and the man upstairs but somehow won't use the name because when the name is used, glory to God, when the name is used, he said over in the Philippians, the book of Philippians, 
And it says this, he said that Jesus, glory to God, verse eight, being found and fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to, unto death, even the death on the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him, come on, a name which is above every name. It's above sickness. It's above manic depression. It's above eye disease. It's above all your family problems. It's above lack in finances. It's above job lack. It's above anything that you can name. It's above that. That means it has the authority over that situation. It says in verse 10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee. And I'm telling you, when you got that name, you come in a room, demons start bowing. They know if you believe in that name. You go through the book of Acts, it's all about that name. What did they do in that name? They healed in that name, delivered in that name, cast out devils in that name, preached in that name. Everything was in the name. Why? Because the name was the authority by which they need to do these things. It wasn't them. When I was working for IBM, I came and gave them a card that said IBM. I'm just a representative of that company. I'm saying you're a representative of heaven who is the, the king of heaven is Jesus. And you're representing him in this earth. So give them your calling card. Work a miracle. Lay hands on the sick. Let them know that the name you possess, that name, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have. I'm going to give you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So look what's going to bow. Every knee should bow. And the things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And that's why I leave that sign up there that Jesus is Lord. Because up in here, it ain't but one name that we function by. And that is the name that is above. So, Lord, where are all your miracles? I'll tell you where they are. God's people got away from that name. Let me show you what happened in the book of Acts in chapter 19. Well, in the book of Acts in chapter 19, this is when some preacher's kids, they saw Paul working miracles. And he said in verse 11, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Verse 13, then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, just took upon themselves, upon them, to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus who Paul preaches. <laughs> and these were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of the priests, which did so. PKs, preacher's kids. <laughs> and the evil spirit answered and said, Now, Jesus, I know. Come on, come on. Paul, I know. Now, the members of Living Word, I know. But who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on him and came upon him and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. He sent them streaking down the road. You know why? Because they didn't know the name. 
The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous can run to it and be safe. That means that that name will even put up a uh, protection around you. It was a lady one time, actual story that she came, was getting in a car and was in a dark place in the city. And some people came, two men came and grabbed her, one by the throat, one grabbed her a garment there and began to rip it off. And she said, Jesus. And she noticed one of them let go. She said, whoa, Jesus. And noticed the other one let go. Jesus. Je Just call the name now. And they let go and ran. Well, she described them, police caught them, and they, she came to the police department or down to police headquarters to um, identify them. Got down there, and she said, yeah, th th these are the ones. And they said, as they were taken away, they turned around and said, excuse, excuse me, uh, miss, who were those two big men that were standing with you? See, she couldn't see the angels. But when you call the name, the name means salvation. It means salvation. We baptize in that name. The controversy came. Somebody said, well, I don't understand because I thought the way to baptize was the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not trying to stir, stir up controversy. I'm just going to tell you what's in the Bible. Well, if you look in the Bible and you look and see in Psalm, in Matthew chapter 28, and you'll see that, that he says in verse 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the what? Name, name of the Father, come on, and the Son. See the word name? It has no S on it. There's only one name. When you say Jesus, you said it all. I'm just giving you another degree now. I'm trying to tell you why no miracles there. Because we've come down and down and down and down and no longer are we immersing, now we sprinkling, no longer we sprinkling. A lot of churches being put up now, no baptism, praise, no nothing, so forth. I go to preach and I say, well, how about calling for souls up in here? So we got to get people saved. Well, somehow we've been seduced, carried away by tradition or doctrines of devils. They hate that name. Don't you ever forget that. So I was at a church and when I learned about the name and I was talking, we were in a Bible study in a, in a Sunday school, rather they had a Sunday school. And I, this is my progression as I was getting saved and so forth. And they said that, and, and the guy, I, I was telling the story about a guy who got baptized and, and then he went back out on drugs. The guy said, where, where, where was he baptized? And I couldn't remember. He said, well, how was he baptized? I said, well, I think he was baptized in the name of Jesus. He said, no, he wasn't. I said, he wasn't? He said, no. You can't get baptized in that name and go back out on drugs. When I heard that, that thing startled me. I never forgot it. You know why he said that? I wrote something down here in my notes this morning. When the anointing is released, when you call that name, it not only conquers whatever is harassing or molesting you, but it eradicates every work and assignment of Satan. If you look in the Bible, you'll see, now I'm just talking about the name, I'm not talking about controversy, I'm talking about the name. I want you to believe so much in that name till you don't want to even talk about nothing else. And what happens is when they went through the Red Sea, remember the Bible says they were baptized into Moses. 
But when you're going through the Red Sea, what's the Red Sea? The Red Sea is coming from slavery, from Pharaoh, come on, into the wilderness, into that next place. And as you come into that next place, the next thing to happen is the Red Sea closed up on Pharaoh. Do you remember that? See, when you're baptized, it's supposed to close up. Not only are you supposed to be delivered, but it's supposed to seal up anything chasing you. Y'all stay with me. Anything chasing you, it'll seal it up. I'm not trying to get doctrinal and doctorial and try to mix all the, I'm not saying that. Fine, you save, fine. I'm just telling you another degree of truth about that name is not only will that name get you delivered, but it will seal you so that what's chasing you cannot get to you any longer. Isn't that wonderful? So what am I saying? This night, we're going to honor that name. I want to impart to you the spirit of that name. So when you go home tonight, you'll start calling that name. You'll walk in the house, say, Who, who's up in here? In the name of Jesus, this is off limits to you. Get out of this house. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what it takes to do that name. It takes boldness today. Yeah. You go in places and like I said, you can ride on public transportation and be talking about the man upstairs and all this kind of stuff. But just mention the name of Jesus. Yeah. Say, Jesus, everything will stop. Everybody will stop their conversation. Everybody will look at you and say, wow, what, what? And, but listen, don't back down because that's what they tried to do to Jesus. Make it so they won't preach or teach in that name. Somehow take that name out. I'm telling you right now, I speak boldness in your life. And that from this day forward, that name will be on your lips. And when you call that name, every demon of drug addiction, come on, every demon of alcoholic addiction, Every demon of, 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 of anger and, and every murder demon, everything in your neighborhood will have to bow. Every disease in your body must go. See, if I've got power of attorney, and that's why one man described it, because Jesus gave him his name. And if I've got power of attorney, how many of you know that if I've got a power of attorney to sign on the body line for my cousin, my cousin can be in Europe, but if somebody wants to do a deal, I could sign for my cousin. I could sign away everything he's got because I've got his name. And I'm telling you, Jesus gave you his name and it is unlimited as to how you can use it. Now, when you use it, he comes on the scene. I said, when you use it, he is right there. The Holy Spirit is right there to verify the power of that name. It is just like Jesus was there. Well, I trust that you were blessed by that message. You know, when the word of God comes forth like that, you have to understand that the anointing comes with it. And the anointing removes burdens and, and destroys yokes. I mean, that anointing by itself will get you healed. You can just get healed just listening to the teachings on healing. Now, here's a point you want to remember. The name of Jesus is above every name. Doesn't make any difference whether it's cancer or, or, or poverty or whatever have you. It's above every name. And it has authority over every situation. Doesn't make any difference what it is. And when Jesus left, he gave his disciples and his church his name. And it's like having power of attorney. I mean, if, if somebody is a friend of mine and they go out of the country and they say, hey, I want to leave you with power of attorney because if something comes up, you have the authority to sign my name, see? And that's what the power of attorney does. So that power of attorney is what Jesus left us that when we say something or do something or command something in the name of Jesus, it's just like he signed it. It's just like he said it, see? 
and the thing obeys us just like it obeys him. So when you use that name, remember Jesus, the power of God, the anointing of God comes on the scene. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of disorder, disease, every spirit of, 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 of infirmity that's been plaguing your body, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Praise God. Boy, this powerful stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, that was the name. As I use the name, I expect something to happen. Can I see it from here? Man, I probably can see it in the spirit, but... I don't go on what I see, feel, touch, taste, and smell. I go on what I said, because I've got faith. Well, that was called Faith for Healing, and we love you. And until next time, keep walking by faith. God loves you and wants you healed in body, mind, and spirit. The key to your restoration is in His Word. Are you ready to receive it? Are you ready to claim power over your situation and obtain wholeness? Call right now, 1-800-711-9327 or online to billwinston.org to receive your very own copy of the message series, Faith for Healing. This anointed three-disc teaching will empower you to receive the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit. Your faith will increase as you learn how to manifest the signs, wonders, and miracles in your own life. When you call today, you will receive this collection as your choice of CD or MP3, DVD or MP4, which is designed to bring you restoration, healing, and blessings. Take hold of these spiritual truths and start walking in heaven's atmosphere here on earth. But wait, when you order right now, you'll also get a copy of The Divine Health Book. This 30-day devotional written by Drs. Bill and Veronica Winston was created to provide you a daily dose of faith-filled teachings on health and healing. Follow along and see your quality of life change as a child of God. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities, and by His stripes, you are healed. Call right now, 1-800-711-9327 or online at billwinston.org. We have just begun. The hour has come. The time is now. Economic Empowerment and Leadership Summit. Joseph Business School presents the most exclusive two-day business conference. We didn't come to take sides. We came to take over. This is your time, your year. Invest in you. Learn from industry experts and business leaders. Innovation Bootcamp focuses on how to be innovative by telling you stories of innovators crafting the future today. For God says, am I not able to make billionaires and not just millionaires? For the Lord says, I want to give the body of Christ the influence that you need to heal America. This conference will lead you closer to your destiny. Register now. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. We invite you to become a partner and join Dr. Bill Winston as he trains believers how to live independent of this world system and have dominion over it. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. 